the kids misbehave. Hunter's told me what he has. Everything isn't what it seems. So I do believe mum and dad are in for a wake-up call. I need to show mum and dad what effect their arguing is having on their family. Let's take a look at some video footage and talk about what we're going to see here, OK? We have such an aggressive family. Who do you think's more aggressive? My daddy. Your dad? Sometimes he's just unhappy because my mama was unhappy with him. My mama says to my daddy, you get out my life and stuff like that. How do you feel when you have to listen to that? It makes me feel like you're about to divorce. And have you ever heard your parents mention that word before, divorce? And have they both said it, or has one parent said it? It's usually my mom who says it. There was this silence, and you could see that they were both thinking, wow, you know, this is our son saying this. I knew that I had now touched some very raw nerves and I knew it was time for us all to sit down and, and get talking. And Dad wasted no time. A whole volcano erupted there and then in front of me. You come in here in front of me and my wife and start bringing up divorce as if we're about to get a divorce. You turn this into something that it's not. Turning what into what? This whole please? situation. Greg became very defensive. He felt that, you know, he was coming off looking bad. Then you insinuate that we're on the brink of a divorce because my child told you that. Nobody that's has not insinuated so. we're on the brink of a divorce, well, baby. That's Hunter what it seems said, like to me. No, that's Hunter, what it seems like to me. Hunter, that's what she's trying minute. to portray. No, Hunter I'm not waiting just a minute. Said, I'm not going to be a part of it. Hunter just said, my mom has talked about divorce. So you said that but in front my, of them? Yes, I've said it in front of them. Okay. I have said, why right. don't we just get a divorce if we're this unhappy? I have said that. Okay. Hunter's expressing his feelings to somebody he feels like he can open up to, and you should respect that. I do respect that. I don't respect Joe taking him out there by himself and start putting words in his and getting him to say things <laughs> words in his mouth, about, right? about divorce. And then, and right, then come over here and mouth. put on a tape and like, this is what's going on with your family. I mean, it wasn't good at all to listen to this man feel this way, but I realised that the truth had hit him hard. Do you know what, Greg? You refuse to accept and listen and respect what your wife has to say because you don't like what you're hearing. That's not so. Really? Jay's so, not here to wait a hurt minute. us. She's wait a here minute. to help us. I'm asking you. Since, all, since everything's coming out, mm -hmm. it's a big surprise now. Why haven't you ever said anything? You know how we all feel. You know I love you. You know your children love you. You know we all love you. But the fact is, we have problems in this family that need to be resolved. And I'm at my last resort. No, it's not the last resort. Yes, it is. So this is the last it's, resort. It's been, how long have we had our boys now? Eight, ten years between the two of them? We have problems. And for you to sit there and say we don't, you're in denial. I mean, we are dysfunctional, and nobody's blaming it just on you. Okay. It's all of us. It's me and you as a pair fighting the way we do constantly around our boys. There's a better way for us to handle our situations than what we're doing now. So, you got anything to say? No. Not a word. Don't shut down, Greg. Don't shut down. No, this is y'all's ball game. Y'all finish it. No, I told you. It's I told our you, ball game. Don't throw me under the bus. And this is exactly what you did. See, and so this I is the problem. I don't, I, I don't see what you, you what see. You, no, you, you got what you wanted. You feel like it's all being so put on you. So you finish your ball games. Nobody you know has thrown you under point, the bus. At this point, I don't bus. care what any of y'all say. Greg, don't quit. Greg, will you just give me the respect to talk for two minutes, please? I'm not talking to you. Will you give me the respect? I'm not even talking to you. And well, I hope you're happy. I showed Mum and Dad a video of Hunter being aware of the word divorce being used. And Dad lost his call. Will you just give me the respect to talk for two minutes, please? I'm not talking to you. Will you give me the respect? I'm not even talking to you. 
and well, I hope you're happy. She wants to talk to you. I don't want to talk. Listen, I feel like a lot of these situations, you are the one taking them out of context. Hunter felt comfortable enough to go to Joe and air out his problems. That's his he right. Didn't just wait go, a minute, no, I'm wait, talking. No, you wait a minute. Let's I'm finish talking. that. He didn't that just go there respect. and say that. She look asked what you're doing. him. Look what you're she doing. got that out look of what, him. Look what you're doing. He, Watching both parents talk to one another is no healthy situation. They talk over each other, not listening to the other person, and it's a shambles. Time out. Hold on. Time out. Time out. OK, and hold on, let me just get something out of my bag. Hold on a minute. Timer. So I brought in a timer to let this family know that every time it turns, that they have two minutes to talk and the other person has to be disciplined enough to listen to what they have to say. The pair of you, you start to talk, then you talk over, you start to talk and you talk over. Nobody's listening. You talk. When this water runs out, then you start, OK? Listen to what the other person's saying. Hear it, and then respond. Joe was a safe place for Hunter to go to, and I think you feel like I knew all about that. It was as big a surprise to me as it was to you. So a lot of things you're taking out of context, and then you're getting offended at me and upset with me because you think I'm throwing you under the bus. You're very well aware of the problems around here, just as I am, just as the two boys are. So nothing should be a surprise. The only point I'm trying to make is I'm not shocked by what you're saying. I just, I don't like the way that we went about it. I'm not saying that Hunter's creating things. I, I do, he's obviously heard the word because he said that his mama said it. And, you know, if that word is being thrown around, then, you know, let's do something about it. We say a lot of words in anger that we shouldn't say and not meaning it. So that, that's a fault and that's something we need help with and I recognize that. That's an area that we need tremendous help in. I think the timer worked well. As they started to recognize it was important to listen to one another, it actually brought their tempers down. So I think it's a good little measure for those first five or 10 minutes when they're like two balls in a china shop. I want to now do what I have to do to make things right and better for my children. Because if we don't change, Hunter's never going to change. The fact is now we're looking at boys that are in a place that everything they take now, they're going to take into their adulthood. What kind of got me the most is it's not about me. You know, it's about my wife and it's about my two sons. It's about the Benton family. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to change things. I've been ready. Well, let's, let's do it. You mean you're not going to kick me out of your house? I guess I'll let you stay a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> I get messages saying, call your daycare. Your kid is getting kicked out of daycare. It devastates me. I would love to find a preschool that can handle him, but I've called everywhere. Oh, dear. Andrew, at dinner time, always an experience. <laughs> <laughs>